My cat seems to want to join us. You can be in the video. Okay, thank you. Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Very excited for today's video. This is sort of a follow-up from my last video, which was a full face of my least expensive makeup in my collection. Today we are doing sort of the comparison to that, which is a full face of the most expensive makeup in my entire collection. There are a couple of items in this video that by themselves cost almost as much or more than all of the items from my least expensive video put together. So we have the range, all right? We've got the cheap stuff, we've got the bougie stuff. So today we are going to indulge a little bit. We're gonna look at some of my fanciest, most luxury makeup. And I do wanna disclaim quickly that I am going to be telling you the retail prices of all of these items. I got a lot of them for significantly cheaper than the full retail price. So I'm not going off of how much I paid for the item, I'm going off of the amount that it costs if you were to go buy it full price right now. So with all of that out of the way, let's get into this very luxurious full face. And no matter how luxurious we're being today, I have to do my influencer headband. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start with the eyes. So I'm just gonna prime my eyes really quickly. I don't really have like an expensive eyeshadow primer, so I'm just using my Milani one because it works. <laughs> So if you've been on this channel before at all, my most expensive eyeshadow palette probably will not surprise you. <laughs> this is one of the Pat McGrath Mothership palettes. I have four of them, but this is the one I pulled to use in this video. This is the Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction. I pulled this one just because it's the one I've used the least because it's the newest in my collection. This is what she looks like. I love this thing. So these retail for $128. Which is insane. I'm, I am aware that that is insane. This one was a gift, so I didn't pay that. But they are very expensive. I have bought three other ones, though, with my own money. I haven't bought any of them full price, but the $110 that I paid for Bronze Seduction was honestly, in my opinion, worth it. These, these are, like, on another level of eyeshadow, especially if you're less of a matte girl and more of a shimmer, glitter, bam pow, crazy kind of look person. If that's your thing, these are phenomenal. They are unbelievable. The mattes are good, don't get me wrong. I mean, with the, for a palette this expensive, all of the shadows better be good. But when you buy Pat, you're buying it for the special shades, the shimmery shades, the metallics, the glitters, all of that stuff. So that's kind of what I generally lean into when I use these palettes. So let's see what we can come up with. I'm gonna start by taking this kind of pinky color here and I'm gonna lay that down as a transition shade. As much as Pat's matte shades aren't necessarily the standouts of her palettes, they are really, really nice to work with. My cat's being a terror. Her mattes really are nice to work with. They're very pigmented and you can build them up very easily, but you can also sheer them out without too much effort. Next, I'm gonna take this darker pink shade here and I'm just gonna use that to define the crease a little bit more. My cat has zoomies, so apologies for him being disruptive. So we've got those pinks laid down. They're so easy to blend, so gorgeous. I really love these colors. But of course, the star of the show is going to be the shimmer. And here's the thing, right? So out of the shimmers in here, I pretty much only use this one because it's insane and shifty and shiny and in just incredible. So I should use a different shade, but that's still the one that I want to use. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I mean, look at it. This is what you go to Pat McGrath for. Look at that. Generally recommend doing the eyes first with her shimmers. There is some fallout involved. Um, but this is kind of what we have so far. I love it. I think I'll leave it there for now and move on to the face. So I'm gonna prime my face. For face primer, I have the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. This is $66, which is a price. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> I promise to not hype up every single product in this video like crazy. Uh, because they are expensive, and I know that, like, for most people, this is not, this is not worth it at all. Um, however, I love this primer a lot. 
it, it is so rich and thick and moisturizing and it just really makes my whole face feel so smooth and hydrated and i'm a dry girl so that goes a long way with me i have a backup of this they put it on 21 days of beauty one year which was crazy so i bought a backup because i go through this stuff like crazy it smells really like citrusy and it's basically just kind of a thick moisturizer but it also has that smoothing quality that you want out of a primer and there's no like particles in it there's no shimmer there's no glitter or mica or anything in there like that this is all just like dewiness from hydration i mean can you probably get something a lot cheaper that's close enough yeah but i'm gonna keep buying this one and for me that's saying a lot because i don't do that with a lot of high-end stuff <laughs> let alone something that costs 66 dollars i will say sometimes during the nordstrom sale they have a set of two of these for the price of one that I think is a phenomenal deal. That would be a good way to buy it. My most expensive foundation is my Estee Lauder Futurist Hydro Rescue. This is 50 bucks. I think it used to be cheaper, but it's $50 now. Weirdly enough, more expensive than Double Wear, which I think is 48, but it's a great foundation. So, you know, if they're charging a lot for it, I get it. This is a little dark for me, so I'm going to mix in a little of this mini of the NARS Radiant Longwear Foundation. I just kind of keep this around as a mixing shade uh, because it's way too light for me. So I'm just going to pump a little of this on the back of my hand. Add a little bit of the NARS. Mixy, mixy. And it's probably still going to be a little too dark, but we're not going to talk about it. That's not bad. I did pretty good. Look at that. Good job, me. I will say, just so you know, what you see here isn't necessarily what you get with the Estee Lauder. The NARS one is very full coverage, so it does add just a little bit to what the Estee Lauder one has to offer. The Estee Lauder one I would describe as a pretty true medium coverage. It's not super sheer, but it's definitely not going to cover absolutely everything. It's not like Double Wear, you know? <laughs> Double Wear is like paint. Double Wear will cover your life. That will recover all your deepest secrets. This is not like that. As you can see, it really has that hydrating kind of finish, kind of a dewy look. It does dry down a little bit, so it doesn't stay looking quite this dewy. You'll see as it starts to dry. But I really love this foundation. I wore this to my college graduation, which was outside in the Texas heat in August, and it looked beautiful from start to finish. So the lasting power is great. And part of the reason that I wore it is because it also has SPF 45, which is, Fantastic. Most foundations that have SPF in them are like, I have SPF 20, and I'm like, that's not going to do anything. That's not going to do anything. Please don't rely on just foundation for your sunscreen. Even if it is SPF 45, the amount of foundation you use isn't enough. But again, I digress. It's a beautiful foundation. As you can see, my skin is dewy, smooth, yummy. It's gorgeous. And that combo together is like, if you're a dry girl, amazing. My most expensive concealer is also Pat McGrath. <laughs> This is the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Concealer. This is $38, I want to say. That's not true. It's $34. Don't let me do Pat like that. <laughs> so, you know, it's not like an insane price, but I mean, for a little tiny bottle of concealer, it's also not great. Um, I like this concealer. It's very full coverage. I need like a teeny dot on both eyes. Um, if you use too much, it can actually start to pile up and cake a little bit and slide around so you actually do have to be careful how much of this you use a little bit goes a very long way um but it is kind of like separating which is not a super attractive look for a concealer i spent 34 dollars on i probably didn't spend 34 dollars on it i'm pretty sure i got this during a sephora sale but not the point it's too expensive to be looking that funky but holy cow the coverage is wild i usually put a little bit there and a little bit out here that might even be too much and I usually use a sponge because sponges will actually kind of pick up a little bit of product, which sometimes is necessary with this concealer. That being said, though, and the formula is just delicious. It's so good. It's not drying under the eyes. Really kind of blurs over your lines under your eyes. I mean, look, is it going to settle into your lines a little bit if you don't, like, powder it well? Of course it is. It's a concealer. They all do that. But this one definitely does it less. I mean, just like, look at that coverage. That's with a sponge. With a teeny dot on the inside of my eye, with a sponge that picks up product, I still get this level of coverage. It's a very full coverage concealer. Honestly, if you could have one concealer in your collection, 
I wouldn't not recommend the Pat McGrath because it works well as a spot concealer and as an under eye concealer. It's so full coverage that you'll have it for a long time. Are there some drugstore concealers that could come close-ish? Yeah, but they're, they're not going to do the same thing. They're not. Um, as far as the Estee Lauder, I think that it's a beautiful foundation and I think that the main brownie point that it has is the SPF level. SPF 45 is very, very high for foundation, but in terms of the actual finish and the long wear, I think you can do just as well at the drugstore. My opinion, I wouldn't personally spend $50 on it again. I would use a drugstore foundation. Like I feel like the Flower Light Illusion foundation has a very similar finish and it wears a really long time. SPF 19, but again, don't get your SPF from your foundation alone. I forgot to say how I felt about that one compared to drugstore, but yes. Pat McGrath, unfortunately, I feel like is kind of worth the price tag. <laughs> I'm supposed to be de-influencing you from these things a little bit. I'm not doing a very good job. None of these are things that you need, by the way. You don't need any of this. Putting that out there. <laughs> All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and contour. I don't usually contour, but it, it goes with the product. So this is the Patrick Ta Bronze and Contour Duo. I have mine in the lightest shade, which is She Statuesque. There's a cream contour and a powder bronzer in here. Uh, this is $40, which makes it my most expensive bronzer. I don't, I, don't, I don't buy super expensive bronzers. Most of my bronzers right now are actually drugstore. Most of them. I just feel like high-end bronzer doesn't really do it for me most of the time. Some cream formulas do. Um, but the powder bronzers, I'm just kind of like, eh, they do the same thing. That being said, this is a really fantastic product. Um, the creams are really what I think makes set Patrick Ta apart. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this cream contour and I'm just gonna place it right here just to create a touch of a shadow. Contour is supposed to be subtle. If you're not big on contour, I understand because most of the time it doesn't make a super noticeable difference unless you know what you're looking for. But I like to do it from time to time when I'm really going all in on my face. And again, this one's nice because it gives you just sort of the hint of the idea of a contour. It's not crazy pigmented. It's it's a little bit similar to the um, cream blush formula in that respect, but it is really nice. Before I use the powder bronzer, I'm gonna use a finishing powder because I don't wanna pick up anything with the powder products. So for my finishing powder, I have this Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Luminous Light. I did not buy this full price because the full price is $54, which is insane. I also wouldn't buy this full price if I were you. Is it lovely? Sure. It's a very nice little bit of a glowy finishing powder. So maybe I won't be cutting the shine that much. Oh well, I'm gonna be shiny today. It's fine. It's, it's cute. It's pretty. It has a little bit of a blurring effect too, which I really like. Is it life-changing? No. <laughs> uh, there's a time on YouTube where people would have said that it was. I don't think that it is. As you can see, my face looks very blurred, very beautiful. Do I think it made a world of difference? No. Would I ever spend $54 on this? No. I think you can do just as well with finishing powders that are far, far cheaper. Enter Kosas Cloud Set even just at Sephora. That's like $29, I think, 32 something. It's, it's way less than this is the point. So beautiful, gonna keep it, gonna use it. I like it. Would never, ever, ever spend $54 on it. So it's my two cents on the hourglass powder. Now that I have a little bit of finishing powder on, I'm gonna go ahead and take the powder bronzer from the Patrick Ta Duo and apply that. One thing I like about this is it's a pretty light shade. So if you're pale like me, you can kind of go in with a heavy hand. It blends very, very easily. As you can see, it took me almost no effort. I just kind of swept the brush over my cheekbone and boom, there it is. Do I think it's worth $40? Um, hmm. So I think the combination of the two products together is worth $40 is what I will say. The cream contour plus the bronzer. Now, if you don't use contour, it's not. <laughs> don't, don't buy something that has a contour in it for $40 if you aren't gonna use the contour. If you will use the contour and the bronzer, then I think $40 is reasonable. Especially if, I mean, if you can get it on a sale, that's even better, right? The bronzer alone is not a $40 bronzer and the contour cream alone is not a $40 contour cream, but together you could make an argument for it. One thing I like about this bronzer is that it has a hint of a sheen to it, nothing dramatic, but it just, makes it look a little more natural on the skin. And it also makes it a little easier to blend. So this is where we're at so far. Glowing to the gods, love that for me. Before I forget, let me actually put some brow gel in. My most expensive brow gel is not like insanely expensive. It's the ABH Brow Freeze. This is $23. I like it, it's it's good. It does, it does the job that it's supposed to be doing. 
Hmm. Do you need to spend $23 on a brow gel? Depends what kind of brow gel you like. So I don't usually do these little pot brow gels. I was curious though. The hype drew me in. Uh, and I will say, I do think that it does a really good job. I think it makes it really, really easy to style the brows in a way that you like, and it holds fairly well. I mean, it's not life-changing hold, but it's nice. Um, that being said, I feel like I can get a very similar effect from the NYX Brow Glue, for example, which is like 11 or $12, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a question of whether you think this is something you would use, whether it's worth it. This is, this one I feel like is very much going to vary from person to person. Am I glad that I have it? Yes. Do I use it? Yes. Um, I kind of just put a little bit in the lid and then rub my spoolie in it and then just drag it through my brows backwards and then up. Would I repurchase it? I'd think about it when I run out. I, I'm not sure I'm ever going to run out because you use such a teeny tiny amount of it each time and there's quite a lot in there. But if I ran out, yeah, I would, re I would consider repurchasing it. But like, if you're interested in it, is it a good product? Yeah, it is. It's a good product. So that's, that's kind of where I stand with the ABH Brow Freeze. And it dries down, but not like an obnoxious amount to where it's like crusty. And then when you go in with a color product, it like flakes. It doesn't do that. That's one of my pet peeves with um, clear brow products is I usually use the clear product first before I do the color so that I know where my brows are sitting and I can add the color in just the right spots. But the ones that flake when I try to add product on top of them are just like, this doesn't do that. It looks pretty thick and jelly in here, but it goes on fairly thin, actually. That's kind of how I'm comparing it to the next brow glue. The next brow glue is like, thick. <laughs> it's, it's thick. <laughs> this is much thinner than it kind of appears to be, if that makes sense. Long story boring, if you're the kind of person who would get use out of this, I do think it's worth having. Next, I'm gonna add a little bit of cream blush to my face. The most expensive one that I currently own is this one. This is the Nudie Matte Blush Cream thing from Nude Sticks. It's cute. I got it for half off from 21 Days of Beauty though, full disclosure. I did not spend the full $35 on it, which is certainly steep. It's pretty. I, I would never spend the full $35 on that. I, I simply would not do that. It's beautiful. The formula is nice. It's very easy to blend. I don't usually do matte blushes much. And a lot of times it's hard with cream blushes to get a true matte. This I think is a true matte cream. So if that's something you like, then that's something in its favor. As you can see, very pretty color, kind of that sunburnt look, which I love. The shade for the record is Beach Babe. So it's a very pretty, easy blush to use, blends out like nothing. I don't have a complaint about this blush. I just don't think it's like fantastic, phenomenal, life-changing enough to pay $35 for. That's all. I feel like I have cream blushes that are cheaper than this that do the job as well as it does. So, you know, I'm glad I have it. I'm gonna use it, but it's, it's fine, you know? <laughs> so the Pat McGrath concealer doesn't always require being set, but I kind of have creasy under eyes, so I am gonna set it with a setting powder. Of course, my most expensive setting powder is the old classic, the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. This costs 40 bucks, which is insane. I mean, there's a lot of product in here. I've had the same one for more years than I am willing to admit. That being said, do you need it? Hell no. Hell no, you do not need it. You know, it was big dirt back in the day because it was kind of like the setting powder. The drugstore has come such a long way since then. I honestly think that there are drugstore powders that blow this one out of the water in terms of quality. Uh, do I think it's bad? No, but I'm telling you, you don't need to spend this kind of money on a setting powder, like, ever, number one. My cat is scratching on his cat tree. I'm sorry for him being disruptive today. If you're a cat owner, you know, if they get the zoomies, you can't just wait it out. You've got to just kind of work through it because they could be doing this for hours. Anyway. I'm gonna be slightly, like it is a blurring powder and it does a really nice job brightening up the under eyes and all those things. Like there's a reason that it got popular in the first place. It's just that you now, since this powder kind of paved the way, you don't need to spend $40 to get these kinds of qualities from a powder. So it's nice, it's a good powder. I wouldn't call it a great powder. I don't recommend you spending $40 on it, long and short. I am gonna to top my cream blush with a little bit of powder blush. This is one of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting blushes. Mine's in the shade Diffused Heat. Very pretty color. These are $45 for this much blush. That is insane. That's insane. That is an insane price. 
I got this from like a Facebook group selling stuff that came in a boxy charm at some point. I don't know. I think I paid 20 something dollars for it, which is the most I would pay for this for the record. Not a bad blush. Very pretty. It's a little sheer. So if you are leery of shades that look as bright as this, this powder that it's mixed in with really shears it out, makes it easier to work with. That being said, I'm a blush girl. And for me, I kind of have to layer this with another blush because I physically cannot get it to build to the level of pigment that I want it to by itself. $45 blush. <laughs> I cannot emphasize this enough. Um, yeah, so unless you're buying it on a mega deal, please don't buy this. I just don't think it has the wow factor to make it worth spending that much money on. Like, look, like it's pretty, obviously, but a lot of that came from the cream I had underneath it, you know? <laughs> you could do better at the drugstore by a wide mile. <laughs> I don't dislike any of these products, by the way. I wouldn't be using them and talking about them on camera like this if I didn't like them. I do. I'm just trying to save you money so you don't go buy some of these things at these prices. Just clearing that up. Let's see, where am I? Highlighter. So I was actually surprised that this was my most expensive highlighter. I don't think I would have guessed that. This is uh, the Becca highlighters. Well, I guess they're Smashbox now. Smashbox and Becca. Point is, they still sell them. Somebody pointed out in the comments of my highlighter collection video that my favorite shade, Opal, is in fact still being sold by Smashbox, which Thank God, because this is an absolutely gorgeous shade of highlighter. I love this. This is like the Breast Cancer Awareness Edition. I got it at TJ Maxx for like 10 bucks. These are $40? That is, that is steep. That's steep for me. I have a $38 Natasha Denona highlighter, and I'm not sure I would pay that again. I think, I think I got it on sale, and even then I'm not sure I would pay that again. $40 is a little steep for me. Um, beautiful, gorgeous formula. I mean, super thin, easy to work with, blends right into the cheek, never, ever, ever sits on top and looks like a stripe and like thick and emphasizing all your texture. Never. It's a gorgeous formula. It really is. But $40, bro. I have a few Becca highlighters and I would never in a million years have spent $40 on one of them. It's a good formula. It's worth spending a high end price for. So good formula, great formula, gorgeous. This is one of my favorite highlighter shades in my collection. No question, really do recommend it. But at $40, I don't, I don't, I don't know if in good conscience I can suggest spending $40 on a highlighter. That's just my take. Let me go back to the eyes really quick and just finish up uh, my lower lash line. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of both of those shades of pink I used in my crease and just run them underneath my eye. Inner corner shade, <laughs> we have this kind of champagne-y color, or we could go fun and do like this purpley, lavender-y glitter. I'm not going anywhere, let's do the lavender glitter. Why not, you know? I don't have anything to do today. I'm probably gonna wash this off after I'm done here. And Pat's glitter shades are so phenomenal. The glitter is glittering. Oh, that doesn't even really do it justice, honestly. Mm-hmm. A lot of her lighter glitter shades are very um, sheer in the base. So you end up with just this very fine sparkle. You can't really see the purple on camera, but I can see it here. It's subtle, it's a subtle purple. I am kind of getting some glitter fallout from this, but you know, like I said, I'm not going anywhere. Just talking to you guys. Not my typical inner corner highlight look, but I am not mad at it. To fill in my brows, I have this Hourglass Arch Micro Sculpting Pencil. I got this in a BoxyCharm ages ago, and I'm about to run out of it. That's how much I have left. Obviously I liked it. Uh, that's really unfortunate. I probably don't even have enough to do both of my eyebrows with this. Bummer, but I'm gonna try. Uh, this is $29. I'm not gonna repurchase it. I, I, $29 for a brow pencil is steep, steep. Um, I mean, I buy the, I've bought the Benefit precisely my brow, which frankly I like better than this one for 23. I, I'm trying to remember if I've ever bought it full price. I don't know. I know I've bought it on sale, which I think you should do. Yeah, there's, this is like gone. Uh, so I'm gonna get a different pencil, but long story boring, I liked this pencil, but I don't think it's worth $29 because I don't think pretty much any brow pencil would be worth $29. That, that's pushing it, that's really pushing it. So let me grab a new brow pencil and fill in my brows and I'll be right back. Okay, so the brows are done. I really do love how they look with that brow freeze. I feel like it just makes it so easy 
to make them look fluffy and like like how people are doing their brows right now. I don't know. I really like it. Um, yeah, I would recommend it. I would if if you're that kind, if you're the kind of girl who likes to do the soap brow type thing, it, it's good. It's really good. Mascara. Let's do it, shall we? <laughs> this is the most insane thing in this video. This is more insane than the palette because like. The Pat McGrath palettes are $128, but I get why they're $128. I do. I get that. They're, they're beautiful. I, I don't recommend spending $128 on them because they're almost always on sale on Pat's website. So, you know, I don't, I don't think you should spend the $128, but I get why they cost that much. This is mascara from Shantikai. I did not buy this. This was a gift from my mother. I'm judging her for buying it. I very purposely did not look up how much this cost when I received it. I looked up how much it cost for this video. This is a $76 mascara. I'm talking to my mom right now. I'm judging you. I am judging you. $76, that mascara better apply itself, do my laundry and my tax return, and never, ever, 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 ever come off. Now, while I will say I feel like the lasting power of this mascara is very good, it is kind of a small nightmare to apply sometimes. It gets all over my eyelids. So I'm gonna fight really hard to not get this all over my eye look because I love it right now. I always love how my eye looks turn out with Pat. So I'm gonna try really hard not to ruin it with mascara, but $76, this should not be this difficult to apply. It's not as difficult as like the L'Oreal telescopic lift. That took me like, I kid you not, 15 minutes to make my eyelashes look presentable. This is maybe four or five minutes, but that's still a lot of time to spend on mascara that's $76. So, you know, do I recommend it? No, no. My mom also said that the most recent time she wore this, it like smudged all over her under eyes. $76 mascara. Buy the Essence Lash Princess for five bucks and thank me later. That one's easier to apply too. Doesn't get everywhere. This is just a very wet formula. I'm hoping that because I've had it for a few months now, It'll, it'll be a little bit drier and less of a challenge, but it's just kind of a nightmare. And $76. I'm sorry, I'm never gonna get over that. I'm really not. I'm not gonna get over that. I shouldn't have looked. <laughs> okay, yeah, it is applying a lot better now that it's dried a little bit. I mean, it does a good job, as it should, because it's $76. You know, it makes your lashes look really nice. It does. Of course I got some on my eyelid. Even when it's dry, I get some on my eyelid. It's nice. It's a nice mascara. Again, it better be. It also kind of smells really floral. It's very bizarre. I, I, don't, I don't know why we're floral scenting mascaras now. Please don't buy this. Is the, is the, the short version of this is please do not buy this. Please do not spend $76 on a mascara. This or any mascara. Yes, it's making my lashes look nice. You know what makes them look just as nice? My Rare Beauty mascara, which I have a mini of, that's $11. My Essence Lash Princess that costs five. My Maybelline Sky High that costs 12 or whatever. Like, mascara is one of those things that I have a really, really hard time justifying buying at the high-end price tag anyway, let alone luxury price tag. It's just, I feel like the drugstore has basically perfected mascara, so I do not see the point. And for something that expires so quickly, spending this price on it is just like, you're just doing it to say that you did it. <laughs> I will say, it's much, much easier to use. My eyelashes are very voluptuous. All of those things. This should be easy to use fresh out of the tube for $76. And it still got on my freaking eyelid. So yes, in case you were somehow still wondering, this is an unequivocal no from me. Not because it's bad, but because I cannot imagine a planet on which this would be worth it. So let's finish off the look with lips. Of course, it's, it's, it's Charlotte. All of them are Charlotte because it's Charlotte. So Charlotte Tilbury, of course, is the source of all of my most expensive lip products. We're gonna do the Pillow Talk line, all of the Pillow Talk line, because I think it's an interesting thing to talk about because everybody hypes it up so much. These are the lip liners. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in the shade Pillow Talk. I do love this. I will say I love this. It's a $25 lip liner, that's steep. I buy mine on the Sephora sales. Um, would I buy it again? Yeah, I have another shade. So yeah, I, I would buy it again. I'm a big lip liner fan. If you just want like a lip liner to use, I don't think it needs to be this one by any stretch. I think there are ones in the drugstore that do as good of a job. It's really creamy and the lasting power is very good. <laughs> and also Pillow Talk is 
it was becoming less of a unique shade, but it was kind of a unique shade for a while there because they were kind of the only people doing this specific shade of like pinky, nudie, cool tone, but not quite. Point is, it's, they're good, all right? Do you need a $25 lip liner? No. But do I kind of get it? Yeah. That being said, in terms of the creaminess, you know what I would compare these to? I would compare these to the ColourPop lip liners in terms of like the creaminess of the formula. And those are $8 and they come in way more shades. So yeah, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say the ColourPop ones would be better. The ColourPop ones would be better. I wouldn't judge you if you bought the Charlotte because like I would probably rebuy the Charlotte because I'm a clown, but the ColourPop is probably like, it's, it's, it's this close to being the same thing, you know? Lipstick, I have the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in Pillow Talk. This is the matte formula. I do not think this is worth the money by any stretch of the imagination. These are $35 and I would never. I got this in like a little set from a Nordstrom sale one year. It came with all of these, uh, the whole Pillow Talk lip line. So that's, I did not spend $35 on this lipstick and I would never spend $35 on this lipstick because uh, I just don't think it's that good. I think the matte formula from Charlotte Tilbury is mistakenly hyped. It's not bad. It's pretty on the lips. The problem is that it's so like silicone-y in an effort to like blur over the lip lines. It is so silicone-y that it rubs right off. So what's the point of wearing a matte lipstick if it's not gonna last? It's pretty though, you know, like it's a nice color. My lip lines are blurred. It's comfy, feels lightweight, but I'm, g I'm gonna give it a second to dry. So I'm being fair. So I gave it a couple of minutes to kind of set in the interest of being fair. I, I could wipe this right off. Yeah, so that's my take on the Charlotte Tilbury matte lipsticks. Um, I actually don't love the formula. Most of the reason that I wear matte lipsticks is for longevity. And if I can't get that, then why? It's my take, buy the Milani ones from the drugstore. The shade Secret from the Milani Color Fetish line is the exact same shade as this. And it's a way better formula that lasts way longer, so. It's my take. And finally, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Collagen Lip Bath or whatever they're called, uh, the lip gloss in the shade Pillow Talk. Uh, this gloss is fine. Doe foot's kind of interesting. I don't know. It's a $35 lip gloss. Again, this came in that set, so I did not spend $35 on this lip gloss, uh, and I never would. It smells like it's gonna be minty and like plumping, but it doesn't do much in terms of the plumping thing. It's kind of thick and sticky. Like not ultra sticky, especially when you first apply it, but as it starts to dry, it gets a little more tacky. It's not bad, you know, like it's definitely a wearable lip gloss, like it feels fine. But that's the thing, it kind of just feels fine. It's $35, like, I don't, no, no. The Tower 28 ones, if you're gonna stick to Sephora, the Tower 28 ones are like 16 bucks and they feel nicer than this. Don't spend $35 on the Charlotte Tilbury lip glosses. It's not worth it. I honestly think her best lip products are the lip liners. Like hands down, by far, her best lip product is the lip liner. But even then, pretty comparable to the ColourPop one. So anyway, this is the finished look. Let me get rid of this. This is the finished look. What are our thoughts? I think it's gorgeous. Kind of looking between this and how I remember feeling at the end of the drugstore video. I feel like complexion wise, I feel very similar. Very similar about the complexion. I feel like it's glowy, it's hydrated, the coverage is really good, the cheek products are beautiful. Very similar feelings about the base. The lips, I don't really have a preference either. They're both good, you know? I like the lip liner from this one better because it's easier to apply, but the overall look, gloss and the liner, you know? The eye is of course by far more beautiful in this look, of course. Like it's not even close, you know? Uh, but that being said, the amount of money on my eyes alone would pay for the entire face of drugstore makeup in that last video about three times over. So yeah, I love my brows way more in this video. I just, I always, I feel like I always love my brows when I use that ABH brow freeze. Overall, aside from like the eyes, if, if, we, if we ignore the eyes because I'm a sucker for Pat McGrath, I honestly think that my most expensive makeup and my least expensive makeup do pretty similar things. I don't know, I just, I feel like it's, it just goes to show really that like, it's not about price point. Price point is not a good indicator in makeup anymore of what's gonna be good. It used to be that like fairly reliably the expensive stuff would be good and the cheap stuff would be bad. It's not like that anymore. Drugstore makeup brands have really gotten on their game and honestly, some of the luxury brands have been slacking, honestly. And, and the thing is, it's not that they're not decent products. It's just that when you price yourself at that price point, 
I'm going to be way harsher than I am about those drugstore products. You know, if I'm comparing a $4 lip liner to a $25 lip liner, I'm going to be a little harder on the $25 lip liner. It's got to justify the price. And some things in this look I think do. Not the mascara. <laughs> not the mascara. I'm not pointing at the mascara. And some things don't, you know? I, I think that you can do a pretty similar experience to this with cheaper products. So I'm big on that. I think that expensive makeup is fun to have. I'm glad that I have all of these things. I will keep them in my collection and I will love them and I will use them. But you don't need to have it. You, you can do something that looks just like this, except maybe the eyeshadow, <laughs> with way more affordable products. So when you see people on the internet hyping up stuff that costs a gazillion dollars, just remember, you don't need that. You don't, you don't need it to look like that, you know? Anyway, I'm done rambling now. Hope you enjoyed this video. I had fun. I feel very pretty. If you enjoyed it, let me know down below. Leave me a comment. Let me know what your bougiest, most expensive makeup purchase is and whether or not you thought it was worth it. I would love to hear what you think. Leave me a like if you got something out of this video or had fun watching. And if you would like to see what's coming next, I hope you will consider hitting subscribe down below. I appreciate every single one of you. And yeah, so until the next one, bye guys.